Welcome to worship with the Universalist Unitarian Church in Peoria. I want to call in everybody who's in the building to come on and join us in worship today. I can hear you. Come on in. I'm the Reverend Jennifer Innes. It's my great joy to be the minister with this congregation of people of all ages and at all stages of life. We bring to life our mission of embracing freedom, loving inclusively, growing in mind, body, and spirit, and doing our part, whatever we can, to help heal the world. And part of our practice includes acknowledging the deep threads that connect us to each other and to the earth. This is the ancestral home of the Peoria people. They aided the European settlers who came down the Illinois River. We offer our respect and regard to the ancestors of the Peoria people for who they were and also who they are today. I want to take a moment to welcome folks who are joining us, maybe for the first time, maybe for the first couple of times, because it takes an effort to seek out a place to be and a place to work on the big questions in life. I want to thank folks for joining us in this community today. If you are new and online, please introduce yourself in the chat or drop a note to the church office if you're wa or uh, if you're watching the recording. If you're with us and in the building, we hope you'll stay after the service and help us get to know you and get to know some new folks. Now, today's service is last in our theme of renewing faith. Uh, and for today, nothing like an effort to renew faith than to be kicking off what we are aiming for for the coming year. Uh, after the service, uh, we'll get a special, well, during the service, we'll get a very special story. But also after the service, everybody is invited to come and join us in Fellowship Hall for our annual campaign cookie kickoff. Everybody's welcome. You didn't have to bring cookies. I'm sure there's plenty of sugar to go around and some non-sugary things too. I think there's like non-sugar things too. Hallelujah. Yes. I want to offer a few notes as we gather together. I invite you to give yourself the gift of space and maybe a little remove from electronic devices. And I invite you to set your, your phone or device in worship mode, the, the not ringing mode, that's worship mode, just in case. And also I want to let folks know, uh, thank you everybody who is masking. We are masking until the children are sung out from the service and while we sing in worship in the sanctuary. And we're also masking in the religious education wing. Uh, these are part of our efforts to help keep each other safe as we're still, still sorting out this great pandemic. And now, let us turn to our opening hymn. And I heeded the notes from folks recently, and there are hymn numbers in your orders of service. Yes! And our first hymn is number 1000. Why not begin with that one? Number 1000 in your teal hymnal, morning has come. Please rise in body or spirit and join us in singing, morning has come.
our opening words for this morning are entitled, The Longing for Something More, by Gretchen Haley. Every little thing that breaks your heart is welcome here. We'll make a space for it. Give it its due time and praise for the wanting it represents, the longing for something more, some healing hope that remains not yet. We promise no magic, no making it all better, but offer only this circle of trust, this human community that remembers, though imperfectly, that sings and prays, though sometimes awkwardly, this gathering that loves, though not yet enough. We're still practicing after all, still learning, still in need of help and partners, still becoming able to receive all this beauty and all these gifts we each bring. Come, let us worship together. I want to invite Jacqueline forward for our chalice lighting. Renewal of our faith, Reverend Suzelle Lynch. Each time we light the chalice, we renew our commitment to our Unitarian Universalist faith. With the spark of a match, we make it new again, as fresh and surprising as the first day. The first day we encountered the spiritual community and realized we were home. We light this chalice for renewal of our faith. now we have the story, and this is a special story written just for today by Amy Pop. is becoming a UU butterfly, and you might recognize that it's part of our kind of a special story relative to our annual campaign kickoff, but for right now, I want to invite uh, both our readers forward, and I need some helpers. I need some helpers. I know we have a couple of plants as helpers. So Jacqueline, if you would come on up and help. Because we could use some helpers, and these are help, could be helpers of all ages. Grown-up helpers are fine. Grown-up helpers are fine. Children helpers are fine. Hmm? Yeah, get the, get, yeah, that one. As you might imagine, a story about butterflies includes caterpillars. So we have... <laughs> we have caterpillars. We'll figure it out. So I'll figure out the staging if you will figure out the reading. All right. Yes. Well, <laughs> Abby, are you helping? But we also need, we also need butterflies. There we go. Ah, we have two caterpillars. You know, not all the caterpillars have antennas. Can you get this other one, Jack? I'll do this one. I'll do this one. Can we switch the mic to this mic? Okay, go ahead. Once upon a time, a tiny egg lay on a milkweed leaf on the edge of the woods behind the UU Church of Peoria. It was April of 2020, and little did the tiny egg know that the world around her was in the middle of big changes, as was he, she. <laughs> When she hatched into a wiggly little caterpillar, she didn't see 
church folk walking up the pat back path or have to worry about children playing at the edge of the woods. Here they come. They had been ordered to their homes and were already in their cocoons sheltering in place. How sad for the caterpillar and the people of the UU church. Through the summer months, the little caterpillar munched and crunched and fed itself on milkweed, completely unaware that the UU human world was still going hungry, hungry for company and connection, even as they reached out to each other through word and deed, they were still aching for more. They just couldn't quite break free of their cocoons yet. Many of them would have loved to simply sit on a big old milkweed leaf with a good friend and have a snack together, or maybe even meet their new minister in person. (laughs) Then the fall came and the little caterpillar was ready to wrap itself in its own cocoon. Meanwhile, in the human world, everyone had to wrap back up too. That winter under wraps was not one, but two seasons that turned into almost a year. New vaccines, medicine to keep people healthy, made the world feel like spring again at least a little bit. That summer was warm. People started to test their wings. Then, nope. But But the fall brought another long winter of Delta and Omicron and bears. Oh my. The people of the UU Church of Peoria had faith in the future and each other and science, and it worked. And the little chrysalises wiggled about. Wiggle about, (laughs) wiggle, there we go. (laughs) They saw more vaccines arrive and peaks dip and the world open up just a little bit and then more. And just as the tiny caterpillar burst out of her cocoon, the people did too. They returned to church. Yeah. Yes. Come on. There they are. They flitted and fluttered about and fed on each other's company with joy and delight. And as the beautiful butterfly fluttered up into the sky behind the UU Church of Peoria, it left behind a community of people bound together with hope and love and faith in all that the future could bring. So we are transforming. We are making progress. We are doing wonderful things. After coming out of all of our cocoons, (laughs) right? Cocoons, all the cocoons. It is so good to be together. Thank you for joining us for the story. And now... I invite our children and uh, youth and adults to their program for today. Let us sing them out with Go Now in Peace. Go now in peace, the spirit of love. receive the offering 
We pass the plate during worship as a symbol of gratitude, as an expression of abundance, as an expression of celebration in the life we share together. In this sanctuary, we harvest bushels of strength for one another and offer our crop in the hands of compassion and generosity. In the authentic and gentle matter of connections, we cultivate simple sweetness to brighten our spirits. May we be grateful for the ways we nourish and uplift each other, for it is the sharing of this hallowed time together that sustains us in all the ways that we gather, in all the services and gifts that we offer. Our ushers will pass the plates, and after, while Rosa plays our music for meditation, and after the plates have passed, I invite us into a time of reflection and candle lighting. This is the time to honor what is in our lives with a tangible act of bringing flame to wick. And for those who are online, know that these candles are also lit for you, or you are welcome to light a candle wherever you may be. And now let us receive our morning offering.
Let us enter into this moment. Being present with ourselves, with our breath, taking in the life that is around us and within us. Humbled by the gifts we are given, by the love shared, by the circle open to us and to all, we offer the prayers of the people. We offer our congratulations, we begin with congratulations and sincere thanks for Diane Brecker, uh, her service in the office as clerical staff. She retires on April 8th. So thank you very much, Diane. We ask for care and healing for Piper Franklin as she recovers from surgery to remove her tonsils and adenoids. That surgery was on March 18th. It is good to see her in church today. And now we turn to sorrow. We offer our heartfelt sympathy to Holly Cook and her family as they mourn the passing of Holly's daughter, Teresa Jett, age 53, of Rock Island, Illinois. Also left to mourn Teresa's loss are her husband, Michael, and their children, Veda and Earl. We offer our sympathy to Holly, to Michael, to Veda, to Earl, to all who knew Teresa. And in our larger world, we continue to hold the people and the nation of Ukraine in our hearts as they disperse, as they defend and fight, and as they die in a war brought upon them. Let us offer one more moment, sharing the quiet for all the joys, the sorrows, the names and milestones that are within us, around us, and remain unspoken. I invite you to pause with me and breathe. Amen. Offer a prayer for my colleague, Reverend Joan Javier Duval. Holy mystery, silent presence, uncertain bearer of the weight of it all. In these quiet moments, we listen. We listen for the maybe still breathing, perhaps still whispering faintest sign of the universal good. We listen between the cacophony of distractions pulling us toward untruth and falsehood. We listen amidst the shrill cries of desperation of we've had enough. And when will they stop killing my people? And of how much more will the waters rise? And when will it be safe to return to my home? And of how much longer I can hang on? We listen and we wait. Through the tumult of these days, we seek assurance. We seek a fulfillment of a promise, a promise made to ourselves, a promise made to those who have been stretched to call neighbor, a promise written and enshrined and yet unfulfilled. Help us, abiding mystery, to hang on and to hold on when all is in question. When all is in doubt, help us to stay firm to our own commitments and our own promises. 
lead us back into connection, back into the bonds of humanity that help us to know each other as beloved. And may we continue listening. May we keep watch. May we beckon love and justice and mercy with our own whispers, with our shouts, with our cries, until all know themselves to be part of the circle of love. May it be so. Amen. I invite Linda Fairbanks forward for our reading for today. This is from the Seven of Pentacles by Marge Piercy. Connections are made slowly. Sometimes they grow underground. You cannot always tell by looking what is happening. More than half the tree is spread out in the soil under your feet. Penetrate quietly as the earthworm that blows no trumpet. Fight persistently as the creeper that brings down the tree. Spread like the squash plant that overruns the garden. Gnaw in the dark and use the sun to make sugar. Weave real connections. Create real nodes. Build real houses. Live a life you can endure. Make love that is loving. Keep tangling and interweaving and taking more in. A thicket and bramble wilderness to the outside but to us interconnected with rabbit runs and burrows and lairs. Live as if you liked yourself, and it may happen. Reach out, keep reaching out, keep bringing in. This is how we are going to live for a long time. Not always, for every gardener knows that after the digging, after the planting, after the long season of tending and growth, the harvest comes. Our, hymn, our next hymn is Life Calls Us On by Jason Shelton. It is part, it was one of the gifts of our virtual and created by our virtual Unitarian Universalist Church, Universalist Unitarian Church of Peoria Choir and our choir director, Dave Breeden. Please rise and body your spirit as we enjoy Life Calls Us On.
seem fitting to bring out that hymn, that calling on moment. A year ago, we were virtual in this, mostly virtual and recognizing in our uh, celebrating my installation with you, mostly virtual in so many ways. And yet here we are a year later, and now what? Now what are we called on to? I'm reminded in considering that it is always good to recognize the value of where one has been on the journey as one of the ways to first answer that question. And about four years or a lifetime ago, however you want to count that at this point, four years or a lifetime, this congregation started an amazing journey. You were finishing one with your previous settled minister, Reverend Michael Brown, who had been with the congregation 27 years and much, so much love and so much work and ministry, so much evolved over that time. Yeah, we can't begin to go into all of that right now, but let me offer a couple of notes. A profound decision to leave where the congregation had been downtown in a beautiful, historic, but challenging building. And to come to this place and build something new in a new location with a new spirit and yet carrying forth the essence of all that had been and the beauty, so much of the core of the beauty that had been carrying forth in the congregation as well. There's been growth in numbers, in regard, in community, in uh, understanding, in families, in people of all ages in that 27-year ministry. And then, you know, people do funny things like decide to retire. And he did. And then it was, what happens next? And it was the first modern search, let's go, let's call that a modern search of this congregation with like computers, right? And amidst all of that effort, that the search team and I, that we found each other, and I found you, and you found me, and then just at that moment, pandemic, I want to take away that wand. No fairy godmother on that day, thank you. And we had to finish finding a path unlike any other. How to conduct church in a way unlike it's ever been done before under the burden of a global health crisis. The world that had been vast in so many ways shrunk to cameras and squares on screens and we became unexpected and unasked for experts in public health. But this was done together, being faithful together. Even while being patient, impatient, frustrated, afraid, and all of the emotions. Finding solutions for every challenge and changing, but also still having to change direction again and again and again. Pivot and plan and pivot and plan and pivot and plan. And each body of each person profoundly and deeply bone-deep tired and tried to sing to each other, one of the benefits of religious community, trying to sing to each other along the way. Loosen, loosen, baby, 
you don't have to carry the weight of the world in your muscles and bones. Let go, let go, let go. And ever so slowly with vaccines and masks and medicine and research, we have arrived here, wanting to enter that next promised chapter more fully. It's not going to be what was expected three years ago, even. Ah, 2019. I knew you well. Right? Right? There was a plan. There were hopes. I want to take a pause and recognize that you might wonder, because frankly, I wonder, when everything won't be about the pandemic. Hallelujah. But I'll tell you, it's an irresistible text, meaning I can't get away from it, or we can't get away from it, because of its impact on every element of our lives. Christian theologian in the 20th century, Reinhold Niebuhr, I believe, talked about the value, talked about the the role of the minister, the role of the preacher, is to begin with a newspaper in one hand and a Bible in the other. And this is what we have to do because this isn't going away. And talking about it isn't going away because we aren't okay. You know, there's one million dead in this country, right? Then that's an underestimate. I've seen what a million people looks like and oh my gosh, this isn't okay. But we don't get through this moment without naming that without naming that sorrow, because this is part of the journey. Part of our task is to face the hardship in life together in all the seasons, in all the seasons, that we might weave together a little bit of, a little bit of care and strength amidst the brokenness to strengthen our bodies and minds and spirits. This is the ministry to our own hearts, as well as with friends and neighbors, with parents and families, with elders and singles. As Mark Morrison Reed, one of our Black Unitarian Universalist elders, reminds us, the central task of the religious community is to unveil the bonds that bind us each to all. There is a connectedness, a relationship discovered amidst the particulars of our own lives and the lives of others, and once felt it inspires us to act, to act for justice, that love in action. It is the church that assures us we are not struggling for justice on our own, but as members of a larger community. The religious community is essential for alone. Our vision is too narrow to see all that must be seen and our strength too limited to do all that must be done. And together, our vision widens, and our strength and our faith is renewed. Acknowledging the fullness of life as we're getting ready to move forward makes it more possible to hold what we care as precious and then decide what to do going forward. And now we prepare for the year to come. I want to take a moment to talk about our theme of evolution, where this came from. It emerged. This theme of evolution emerged from the energy of those of us planning because we were thinking about everything that has happened. Not just the last few years, but the whole course and arc of the congregation and of Unitarian Universalism and all that has been learned all that remains challenging as well, all that remains unfinished, all that remains as live and living tasks before us, but also, but also all that can be, all that can be. These cur- this congregation's aspirations of embracing freedom and loving inclusively and growing in mind, body, and spirit, and truly wanting to help be part of healing the world. All of these are still carrying forward. All of this is still true. All of this is still 
our work. You know, a couple of years ago when I started, the themes I offered were connection and covenant and quality. We just needed to be together in all the ways that we could and try to tend to each other and live into the promises that had been made. This year, the key words I took from my installation from the Reverend Keith Cron, being a congregation of joy. I think the story today might have helped fulfill that. Being a congregation of grief, recognizing all the hardship, and being a congregation of service. Being a congregation of wanting to be with each other and assist, and still, even with all of our personal concerns, still being mindful of the world, still being want, wanting to be part of what's going on. And next year, as the religious education search has been going on, as the board has been talking about the needs of the congregation, next year, the themes we're looking at are indeed community again, because boy, howdy, we need it again. But families, all the ways that we gather, and leadership development, or development for all of us, really faith development. I want to talk about something that's been broadening my way of looking at all of these themes, all that we're striving for at this moment. In our current Thursday night adult ed program, we're exploring core values in Unitarian Universalism uh, as part of a larger conversation. Um, and the core values as stated, it, some people know it most frequently, is our seven principles and our six sources. Those have been largely kind of as they were since they came into formation and were voted in in 1984. I mean, when I was in middle school. I'll just put that. So it's been a while. Yeah, it's been a while. 1984, it's been a while. And we're opening up the conversation. Because we're not who we were as a faith in the 1980s. We're not who we were then. And some things like the fashion of that time, need to stay in the past. I was a child of the 80s. Let me tell you, don't bring it back. Mm -mm. But some will and should carry forward. Paula Cole Jones is one of those voices that's helping us to carry things forward. She's a black uh, educator, speaker, teacher, organizer, community builder. And she's the person who's been talking about our eighth principle that calls us into beloved community for and, and anti-racism work and justice. He's a lay leader who grew up in All Souls Unitarian in Washington, D.C., and is reminding us of our hope and our ability and is calling us on to more. And in 2020, she talked about, or 2019, must have been 2019, that she talked about her understanding of community at this point. And she was naming what she was calling was a community of communities where recognizing, as we have in our congregations, all of these different ways that people enter and might find a small group with which to connect. It could be the choir. It could be, in our case, the small group ministries, the covenant circles. Uh, it could be in religious education. It could be in, in the adult ed programming all kinds of ways that people enter into and find their own little body of people to be with in a congregation of any size. And as she's calling us on to continue our anti-racism and multicultural work, she's reminding us that we've already done so much shifting of our culture. Our theology is development, developing, but we're also shifting how we are with one another. In Unitarian Versalism, we've done major shifts, becoming more welcoming of folks who are lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and questioning, and queer. That really started back in the 1960s, the 1970s. We did that also with gender concerns starting back in the 1970s and 80s and 90s, with including being more inclusive of, of women, we keep moving forward. We keep amplifying 
and doing the good work of saying, okay, what is the justice work that we need to do now? But in our congregations, in our congregations, I am reminded that what some of the evolution that we're doing at this point of the last few years is that we are, that there is more to the congregation than who is sitting here in the pews. That's one of our great learnings of the past year, couple of years, is that there's more than who we see in front of us. We've become truly multicellular, if you will, and even asynchronous, meaning that we encounter church in different ways at different times. The Sunday morning is certainly the central shared experience, and I am a big fan of Sunday morning, and us doing all, all of us doing our best to bring our best and be our best and even be our best and broken selves here in this moment. But there's also so much more happening in any given time. As Marge Piercy reminds us, the connections show up slowly and underground and aren't always necessarily known by everyone. I mean, honestly, I'm still taking into account the kind of the nodular nature of church especially as it is now, that there's people who will be watching the service and I have no idea who they are. It'll be like a week, a month from now, who knows when. But we're finding each other in ways. We're finding each other in ways that some of us will never understand. Some of us are never going to embrace the technology and that's okay too. And that's okay too. And yet here we all are. This congregation's already been working on evolving, already working toward this place and this moment and this time when we could be doing something next and new, already putting in the structures that would have made it easier to, for the end of Michael Brown's ministry then to come into this ministry in this moment and making more people be able to be involved. We have learned so much the pandemic was this opportunity to reveal the fractures in our social systems, how much people need each other, how much each has our own hardship, and how much it means to be in an institution such as this. Because a faith community is uniquely qualified in our society to be a place where individuals and families gather for generations and ask the questions of our lives, and sometimes make an emotional mess in the process and still be able to find love and care and learning, a learning together that never ends. One well, of my favorite recent quotes of this moment is that we don't have a religious education program. We are a religious education program. We are, let me say it again, we are a religious education program. Because we keep developing as humans, as people, as beings of faith throughout our entire lives. We keep moving forward. One of the reminders I had is what... So these are some things that I've already done and we've already talked about. But I want to offer one that, that is... Trying to, that I'm, it's kind of opening my mind a little bit more, reminding me that there are more perspectives. Paula Cole Jones points out in her experience uh, in growing up in Unitarian Universalism that she didn't know it as a white church, but she was with All Souls DC, All Souls and uh, Unitarian in Washington DC. There was racial diversity in the ministers, in the religious educators, in music, in lay leadership. It was not a white experience. And every time she hears that, her brain has to say, wait, no. She was trying to caution us against confusing our culture with theology, because it's not the theology that keeps us in any one racial profile. It's how we understand ourselves. Reverend Tet Gallardo 
from the Philippines, who was our guest minister back in November, uh, she also brought home the fact that there's broader ways to understand what we're about. Uh, that the Unitarians who might be in like India, for example, they're not white either, right? The point, the point is to help us understand how much we are still shifting and evolving in our perspectives, our practices, that we get to be deeply multicultural, deeply broadly different in our perspectives. I think what we're striving for ultimately, let me offer what we're striving for ultimately, is to be a community of people who want to be emotionally authentic and able to address conflict. We want to be able to be real with each other, not, not the absence of conflict that says it seems to say everything is okay and that we're friendly and having pie and cookies together and these are nice things, but how do we encounter each other when it's really hard? We want to be multi-generational, multicultural, multiracial, because a liberal approach to religion is not confined to one time or place or people or generation. We want to be a religious community recognizing that we are made up of so many individual parts, so many smaller groups who are also committed to a search for truth and meaning, a dynamic relationship between liberation and accountability, freedom and responsibility, and that we are motivated by love, practiced in compassion and in service to others, that we bring love into action with justice, we bring our values into action, our principles into action. This can be a faith that is, we want to offer a faith that is, trans, remember the faith that transformed us in the first place, that brought us here in the first place, and then bring that out into the world. You know, the first moment I walked into this sanctuary, I felt the expansiveness of the room, to be sure. But what I also felt more powerfully was the potential the expansive nature of the community, the expansive potential and possibility of this place and the people that had made it possible. And what would come when you and my, your and my ministries became a we and an us, I felt like I could spread some wings and soar like that butterfly, right? This is a place of greatness in service to our larger hope. Let us continue to move forward, continue to evolve and discover. The evolution is televised. It is, the evolution is televised and it's on Zoom and Facebook and YouTube as well as in person. Let us be deep and local, tend to each other, Create networks in these the assorted cells that comprise the congregation. Be deep and local in tending to our grief, to misunderstanding, to hurt, to accidents. Be deep and local in our spiritual practices and our love and our passions and sharing them with others, making that visible to our neighbors and friends here. Let us know where we are, locate ourselves in this place, deeply present to this time and place in this congregation, and then move forward, move onward in creating a beloved community created, devoted to justice and caring for people of all ages and in offering a liberal presence and a liberal approach to religion in our larger community. Are you ready for the evolution? Let's go. Amen.
Please rise and body our spirit for our hymn number 1018. Come and go with me. There's no like the pre- no time like the present to get started, right? Come and go with me, number 1018. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. Mindful of our highest aspirations, bound by common faith and purpose, and yet beginning with ourselves as we are. Let us take one more movement, one more motion together in our unending quest for dignity, justice, love. Let us go forth. Our worship is ended. Let our service begin. (laughs) 